pretty sure I speak for every single human being on the planet, or at least in America, that we'd all like to really just leave 2020 in the past, never think about it again, because it was a pretty terrible year. But and now we're in 2021, so hey, we should be focusing on the good in 2021, but I am here for one last time to revisit the garbage and everything that happened in 2020. And you know, as a music year, it wasn't awful. There was a ton of great albums that came out. I just covered those in my last two videos. But now I am here to talk about the not good, the bad in 2020. And I didn't go out and seek as many bad as I usually do in a year. I kind of just let come to me what came. And I heard a lot of bad stuff, considering I can make 10 of them. I heard enough to make a list of 10. And there weren't many honorable mentions, so I didn't really go through them. Funeral by Lil Wayne was close. It was going to make the list. But then after revisiting his whole discography, I came back on that one um, song, or that one album, I wanted to go back through it, and I didn't think it was good upon revisit, but I thought it was better. So I just, I just removed from the list. But yeah, there were 10 bad albums this year. There were 10 albums that were bad enough to make a list like this. Now, not all these are the worst. Really, I will tell you when we get to the worst, but yeah, let's... Let's jump right in. I would also like to point out the vinyls changed a bit. Um, you can see over my shoulder if you know album covers well. I got Enter the Wu-Tang and I moved it up there next to uh, Chronic and All Eyes on Me because those are all classic 90s records. And now down there, I don't know if you can see it often, but because the internet by Childish Gambino is now on that row. So yeah, I'm liking my vinyl collection so far. I have a couple others like My Beautiful Darkest Fantasy, Kids See Ghosts, and Ready to Die are all going to come in eventually, but I don't know when. They could come in as till like February, so... It's, it's up for choosing what comes soon. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the albums that sucked in 2020. So let's just get right into this list. Kicking things off at the most forgettable. I mean the most, for, not actually the most forgettable album of the year. Because there are albums that didn't make this list. So for that reason, I haven't thought about them. Like the Megan the Stallion thing. Um, my number 10 comes in as a collaborative effort from uh, a, two rappers who had commercially successful years. Uh, quality wise i thought they weren't very good they weren't terrible you know but like they released they both released their own records and both of them were just pretty mid for me but uh that that, that comes in as little lucy Vert and future who came in with their big collaborative effort baby x baby pluto which they've been teasing for months now and surprisingly enough not surprising actually it was totally not worth any hype or any weight because it was just 14 of the same song over and over i think even 16 of the same song i don't know it was a long boring album to me and it wasn't even that long it was like a, not even an hour but my god this album bored me to death it was so boring and uninteresting that i didn't even traditionally traditionally review it i didn't even go through the track list because i just didn't remember any of the tracks and they were all the same freaking thing overall i don't think this is the worst album i just think really if you're going to give me an hour of just the same song over and over and over i i'm not gonna listen to it again a positive review it was just boring to me and it really felt like Lil Zever and future came in to give us the least amount of effort possible this is just boring to be perfectly honest it would be better if um the baby kept this side of him off of the albums blame it on baby was not worth anyone's 30 minutes i liked that a lot don't get me wrong and i liked the baby you know i I, I don't think he's delivered any album that I would recommend listening to. I know the meme is all just like, let's praise him. But for this list's sake, I don't really like the baby in terms of the album. I think he has a lot of really great features. And I think he has a lot of charisma. Just for some reason, he doesn't know you know how to make a good album. I liked the deluxe. So I thought that had a lot of good tracks on it. But the original had Rockstar. Rockstar is one of the best singles of 2020. Everything else, though, pretty <laughs> uninteresting and not worth it. Um, a lot of just cringy tracks. A lot of just uncharismatic tracks for one of the most charismatic phases in hip-hop you'd think this album would be so dry and uninteresting but turns out blame it on baby has little to no fun entertaining content on it rockstar was a fun three minutes for me and i like find my way just because i like the i like the idea of taking friends guitar and making a whole hip-hop song but really at the end of the day this didn't need to come out i haven't listened to his brother's tape yet i need to hear that i feel like that'll be really good because i think the baby could be really good emotionally. Well, well, this wasn't good though. The sad shit was on this, and it was a terrible song. So overall, I don't need to hear this. I don't need to ever hear this again. It was it was kind of like good news, but like worse. You know, I don't do this often, and I don't want to do it again. But like, if I were to do this, and if back last year in twenty nineteen, 
if I did lists, if I was a hip hop reviewer, then I would have given a spot to Logic. Not 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 um supermarket and confessions on their own spots. I would have given, and I would have made it number one because Supermarket's like the worst album I've ever listened to. But um, because he had such a bad year, he had two terrible albums. I would have both made the list: Confessions of a Dangerous Mind and Supermarket. And surprisingly, the guy he collaborated with and beefed with did the same thing, where he made two terrible records. Now neither of them are as bad as Confessions and Supermarket, but I'm I'm reserving my number eight spot for just Joyner Lucas. That means uh, ADHD. And Evolution, both those projects. We start with ADHD. Really anticipated album for me. Actually, one of my most anticipated of the year. You had Joyner Lucas, a rapper who had delivered, um, I'm Sorry, that track, and I'm Not Racist, and the verse on Lucky You. And he had so much great material. I thought he was going to give a, deliver a great debut. And he teased it. He released I Love in 2018. And then for the remainder of 2019, he was just single, 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 to the point where nine singles from a 14-song album had been released. We heard it, and the other five songs weren't much more interesting than the singles, which were all fun until I heard them, like, more than once. They all just got so boring to me. I liked Isis. That was fun. Good collaboration project. I like Revenge. I thought that was a great track. That's one of my favorites of the year, honestly. Um, AHD was like a Juice World ripoff, but, you know, it was okay. Um, it was like I, me being someone who actually has ADHD. It was like the bare minimum of what he could do. Overall, this was one of the most disappointing albums of the year. Then we did Evolution, which wasn't any better. It was just more cringy. I'd actually say Evolution's like a tad bit worse. I think it's I, I think in terms of an album it's worse, but in terms of how much it pisses me off, I kind of expected Evolution to suck. But truth be told, Evolution just ripped off of everybody else. Because this man, I don't know what happened to Joyner. He was so good, and he was so original. And then he started just doing what everybody else is doing. It's like he was, was really good at these storytelling tracks where you get in people's minds. Like, happy birthday, I'm sorry, I'm not racist, and also Frozen. Like, he had so many tracks like that. And then he's like, ten bands. Um, I don't even remember anything off Evolution. Just, oh god, this man fell off. I really hope in 2021 we get just a great second album from him. Because his debut and that EP, man, 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 man. Rough, rough times for Joyner, man. Rough times, and I respect him as a Neither were very entertaining or at all fun. They were just, they were just kind of, they just kind of fucking sucked, you know? Ah, this is not nearly as interesting of an album. It's not like I can talk about this because I was a Joyner fan. It's like I can't even talk about how uninteresting Gunna is. Wanna, wanna, wanna never listen to it again. I, I'm making myself more cringy than my own album. I have to give Wanna credit for not being as bad as Drippers Drown 2. But I like don't want to give it any credit because it's not good. It's not it's not a good album at all. It's number seven on the worst of the year. But we're at the end of the day. I really want to just not even do this spot because it's just a bad trap album to me. Wanna is just unlike Little Baby to me is like a more uninteresting young thug, and then Gunna is like a more uninteresting little baby, and that's not fun. But at least Wanna is like weird. At least it's just like a whack album. At least it's just whack. It's, it sucks, but it's just whack. It's kind of funny, I guess. I don't have. It was so, so uninteresting, honestly. I have going to piss people off with the number six. I reviewed this album a week ago. Um, I'm going to really piss people off. I don't like Playboy Cardi. I don't like Whole Lotta Red. Like I gave one a credit for making a better album, I will give Playboy credit for making a better album than Dial It. Then again, it's Dial It, so it's pretty unlistenable in the first place. But Whole Lotta Red, man, this was rough for me. It was... It felt so unfinished. It felt like this wasn't ready. And that is so weird to me. Because how freaking long he hyped this up. And for like nothing. For 24 tracks of really no content. Every track feels like the same thing. There's cool tracks on this. I like Control. I thought like uh, the one about the sky was okay. I like the Kanye feature. I kind of cut it sucked. But man. Playboy Cardi. Hyped us up. I wasn't hyped because it's Playboy Cardi, but he like said to the world, we're coming with this new record, and it's, it just wasn't good. It just didn't really give anything interesting from us. Whole lot of red. Um, more like whole lot of garbage. I'm, I'm done making these puns. I'm not. I'm definitely not. My number five, we have an artist that every single freaking year continues to just dominate top ten worst lists and always make it on everybody's worst list because this man cannot do make a record. Although I like this emergency tsunami. Um, I give it to uh, Good Intentions by Nav. Um, like I mentioned, Emergency Tsunami proved that I could like a NAV record. Good Intentions made me believe more I could. 
I didn't listen to Brown Boy 2, though. Most people are like, Good Intentions slash Brown Boy 2. I didn't even give it a chance, because I didn't, I didn't want to sit through another NAV record. I don't want to do it again. I I thought, um, what's the one? Reckless? Yeah, that sucked. And then uh, Bad Bad Habits was awful. It had a cool weekend feature, though. And uh, they always have the one good thing. Like, uh, Reckless had the cool Travis feature. Um, um, good, good Habit, Bad Habits had the weekend feature. And by the way, I'm tired right now, and I intentionally record this when I'm tired because I just like being dry in these videos. But um, Good Intentions had the cool uh, Travis Scott feature. Uh, the rest of this, though, can go to hell. Nav can go to hell. This is so bad. He is such a bad rapper. I hope he does more emergency tsunami type things because that's vastly better. It's only really because of Wheezy that I enjoyed that, that but <sighs> Good Intentions, man. I don't even have anything to say about this. It's just a terrible trap album. It's just bad, you know? You know, Good Intentions is pretty bad, but, like, at least it wasn't fucking Pegasus. Trippy Red. What, who the hell is Trippy Red, anyway? He literally did nothing interesting and then was like, boom, here's my epic, like, two CD. I don't know if it's two CDs, but he had, like, the full album, which was way too long. And then he gave us... By the way, this album took me three days to get through. I think three straight days. Because every time I'd listen to it, I'd pass out and fall asleep. Because it's so boring. It's like Trippy Red just does the same thing for 24 tracks. And there's like, he uses like these deep piano instrumentals, which are okay at times, but like, they're never good enough to make this not a bad album because Trippy Red pretends he's so much better than he is. I heard CD Deeper Productions describe this as an album that only massive Trippy Red fans can enjoy. And I so agree. Why is this 20, 20 fucking six tracks long? Life After Death is shorter life after death whatever this is honestly trash man this was a rough lesson my number three spot will be successfully the most controversial thing i might have ever said it maybe on this whole channel uh mo nobody in hip-hop agrees with me here except for anthony who's not really a hip-hop person though um everybody loves this man everybody loves this album and i'm sitting here in the back like mr grinch and just like i hated it i hate my turn little wayne no, but Lil Wayne, like, he's so to rip off of Lil Wayne. Lil Baby, Lil Baby. Um, he came us with My Turn earlier this, this year. And this has been in a lot of praise. Album of the year. Great trap album. Lil Baby is the next Lil Wayne. Um, the block is hot. You know, fuck, every Lil Wayne album is better than this. I'm talking Rebirth. Rebirth is better than My Turn. Because at least Rebirth had dropped the world and was only 42 minutes. It sucks other than that. But, like... I didn't get anything out of my turn other than just being annoyed that this was the album everybody hyped up, and it's just nothing. It's just 20 tracks of Lil Wayne, Lil, um, or Young Thug, just impressions for the whole time. He is such a derivative artist of everyone, and I, I actually like his flow sometimes. I hate his vocals, but I kind of like that flow. Um, but it doesn't really help this record from just being boring and long. And a part of the reason why this album is up at number three and not lower is just because of how pretentious it is. It's not, not like he just made a bad trap album. He made a bad trap album and then went number one for like a whole year. Like, why? What is? What do you guys see in my turn that you don't see in all these other albums that you all said were trash? Why is Good Intentions terrible? And I think Good Intentions is terrible. But why is that terrible? And my turn is like album of the year. Why does Sean C think it's out? I don't get it. I don't disrespect you guys. It's an opinion. But I I just don't enjoy this. I don't enjoy Little Baby. What can I what can I say? I don't like him. I thought Bigger Picture was okay. But nothing else about the guy really really gets me, you know. Oh god, my top two. My my top my top two. I'm not gonna even introduce this man. He had a cool April and then everybody nobody cared. Sure. Uh, Tattletales, um, by 6 9 um, this album at least, you know, I didn't, get, I, I, I was so close, I mean, so close to giving Tattletales number one, but I did not give it number one, because, I, the reason why I didn't give it number one was because it's just not, it's not offensive enough, you know, because, you know, you got, you got, you got Gooba, Gooba's not great, it's not, it's not good at all, actually, nothing on this album's good, in fact, all of it is almost unlistenable, but Trolls, you know, you got a good Nicky verse. You know, Gooba's ironically fun for 30 seconds. Everything, I mean, everything else, though, about this album 
was not ready. It's just six nine is such an uninteresting artist. I mean, in every lane, his um, his yelling style is cool for a track, and then after that, it just became boring. And he really rode off of the waves of what he of the splash he made earlier this year. Everybody's talking about him, and then he did. He sold like fifteen k in his one week because nobody cares about Tattletales. Tales. It's so uninteresting as an album to me because Six Nine just doesn't do anything interesting for an hour. Um, I don't think he's the worst out there. He might be the least worst. He's pretty unlistenable. But honestly, Tattletales, Tales is just not finished. It's just bad line bangers with bad trap bangers. With annoying verses, and he ruined Akon's career. So truth be told, I don't ever want to hear this again. Just, just no, nope. I never ever want to hear anything from Six Nine again, and I probably won't, considering the fact that this album tanks. It did awful, and then he criticized Lil Durk for tanking. Uh, uh, what? What? Two years in a row. I didn't do this in twenty. Just saying, my worst album twenty nineteen is Supermarket. Okay. Uh, by logic. Two years in a row, has a white boy came out with an album where he tried to do um, like a non, like a hip hop fusion. Like he, uh, Logic did a awkwardly awful fusion of rock and rap, and in result, it's tied with Speed and Bullet to Heaven to be the worst album I've ever listened to. But then you know, uh, what's his face? Um, uh, G Easy tried it this year, and he bombed. Uh, nobody cared, because nobody really cares about Jeezy, and he made everything strange here. For my worst album of the year. You might have not heard of this, because nobody heard of it, but I heard of it because I saw that Anthony Fantano review go up where he said it was not good. I watched the review, I was like, oh my god, this is going to be awful, and let's listen to it. I listened to it, I regret that so much. What the hell was this? I mean, what? It was like, okay, first of all, F, like F album, like like, the, I've given three Fs out in history. This is one of them. Because he tries to do this weird, I mean, awkward pop, hip-hop fusion. And not for a millisecond of this album is it entertaining in any form. It's cringy. It's so boring. So sleep-inducing and boring. He... This man is incapable of being interesting. And I mean that in every sense of the word. He is so boring. It's like... Such an uninteresting thing. I can't even review it. Frick, this is such a battle. Also, the cover art. Look at that. Look at that. That is real cover art. I can't believe this is a real album. I can't even believe it. Worst album of the year, without question. I know 6 and 9 was more popular, you know, but... Man, g -Eazy. I know it's supposed to come with these things happen, too. But I don't care anymore. Man, I liked this guy, you know? I liked him. But oh my god. Oh my god. In substitution for reviewing that album, I just kind of cried, basically. And that that's okay, because it's everything strange here by g Easy. Um, what do you guys think of my list? What are your guys' worst albums of the year? Please don't. If you say music to be murdered by, I will delete your comments. I won't. That's not fair. Uh, see you guys next time. I don't have any outro to say. I, have, I will work on my top 50 best of 2020 songs but just remember it, it might take a while it might take a while because it is 50 songs it's like making five top 10 lists i'll make it shorter i'll probably find a way to make the easier edits i'm not ready for that but i have anything else to say see you guys next time, time. bye my throat changed real quick bye because i yelled bye